Hi, this is Andy with wristadvisor.com, and today we have another special hands-on Breitling watch review for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Super Chronomat B0144 Chronograph. So this is not just the regular Chronomat, this is the Super. Uh, the difference is, is this is a 44 millimeter compared to the regular Chronomat, which is a 42 but you'll also notice that the bezel is ceramic. So if you were someone like me when you saw the, um, the B0142, you took a look at that uh, polished bezel and you, know, you just think, oh wow, that's going to show scratches really, really, really quick. Um, uh, it was really interesting to see how quickly Breitling came out with the 44 with the ceramic bezel. So this reference today, we have the blue version. And I think it's going to show up really nice here on camera for you guys. So I just want to talk about, uh, before we go into the specs of this watch, what Breitling is doing with the Chronomat. So this is called the Bullet Bracelet. Uh, this watch very closely resembles the vintage chronograph when it was first released. Uh, Breitling is a watch brand that's going back to its roots Uh I mean, this is a, a massive change from what we saw the Chronomat uh, just only a couple years ago that was selling and selling fairly well. So this took uh, a lot of guts. It's a very bold move to change one of the most iconic collections uh, back to uh, what it used to be. So let's go ahead and let's put this watch on the wrist. And, and why I do that, I just want to thank you guys for, for watching this video. I know I say like and subscribe, but it really does help us get more hands-on with really cool watches like this. So I want to thank you guys uh, for helping us along this journey. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll, uh, I'll clasp it. It's not fitted for me. Uh, this is a, a new watch, so I didn't really feel comfortable taking out any of the links and bracelets. But as you can see on the wrist, I mean, this is a, this is a very large watch. Uh, you know, I've had uh, the largest watch I've ever owned was a 42 millimeter uh, Seamaster 300 meter professional. And uh, it felt big. Uh, this just feels ginormous. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a small guy. I'm not a big guy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I definitely don't think I'm big enough to be able to pull this off. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that you got to be a big guy to be able to wear this watch. But I'm saying I think you have to be a big guy. Uh, to wear this watch. It is massive, or you just have to love uh, just a very large, large, large wrist presence. Uh, but that's not saying that this watch is not beautiful. This watch is absolutely stunning. Um, this, like I said, this is the blue reference. I think it has one in a black as well. Uh, I just saw the blue and said, hey, you know, Derek, uh, who works over at Moyer Fine Jewelers, who really helps us out getting a hold of these watches, Said, you know, I gotta, I gotta take that, uh, that blue one home. And to be honest, uh, I didn't know that this was a Super Ocean. I mean, I think these must have just got released. I mean, I thought this was just uh, the regular, I mean, not Super Ocean, um, the Super Chronomat. Uh, I, these must have just got released because um, honestly, I went to the Breitling website uh, before did the review just to take a look at the quick specs, uh, refresh my memory on some other things. And I was like, this is a uh, completely new from, from Breitling. So, you know, it got me even more excited to be able to review this watch for you guys. Um, so now that we've had it on the wrist, uh, we talked a little bit about where Breitling is, where Breitling could be going, um, with, uh, going back to its roots in the, in the vintage, uh, design kind of space. Let's do specs. So the movement on this watch is the Breitling uh, 01 Manufacturer Caliber. So this is uh, an in-house caliber by Breitling. And if you didn't know it by taking a look at the spec sheet, uh, you could know it by taking a look at the subdials. So the 3, 6, and 9 uh, chronographs by Breitling indicate that it's an in-house movement. If you have the... Uh, the 12, the 6, and the 9, or the 12, the the, the 3, and the 6, uh, you know, that indicates that it is an outsource movement. So um, I didn't know that until I was doing research for the Navitimer review that uh, has already came out, uh, but I thought it was really interesting uh, to kind of know that, that little fact about Breitling. 
So this is a uh, self-winding mechanical movement. Uh, I can't remove the sticker because uh, this watch is still considered new. Uh, having trouble with the camera getting focus on it. Hold on one second. See if we can get a good one here. There we go. So as you can see, it's not highly finished, which you know to me is not a big deal, uh, but for some people it is. Um, you know, I think it's right on brand with Breitling. Uh, it, this is uh, an, an instrument. It is a tool. Not so much interested in, in finishing of the movement. But at least they show it to you on like other brands like, like Rolex. Um, the movement on this has a 70-hour power reserve. Uh, it has a quarter-second uh, chronograph, 30-minute and 12-hour um, dials as well. We have the uh, pretty standard um, 28,800 vibrations per hour, 47 joules, and then we have a, um, a date aperture right here at the six o'clock position. And that dial uh, is the it's a it's a white dial. Um, I don't think you can really see the contrast on uh, on the camera right here, but uh, you can you can definitely see it in person. But it, it's not that uh, it's not that large of an issue. Um, so let's, uh, let's give you a look at the chronograph. So what you have to do here is you have to unscrew the crown on the, on the start and uh, the reset pushers on here. And the BL1 movement is very good at making this, this first click. Um, I wouldn't say difficult, but definitely purposeful. So here it has a nice sound. So the start, stop. Stopping is pretty easy, and then resetting it is obviously very, very, very simple. Um, on the inside of the um, case, well, by the dial we have the tachometer. That's going to measure uh, distance, and it's, well, it's going to measure your speed and uh, distance. Excuse me, not distance. It's going to measure speed. Um, you have the 30 seconds counter right here, the 12 hour, and then the running 60 seconds. Uh, I love the the red chronograph hand. It uh, just is a nice contrast of the blue. I think red, white, and blue personally looks really well. Uh, you know, I, I tend to lean more towards blue in my watches. I, I don't know why, but it's just something that I've gone to lately. Uh, I've gotten the recent uh, Omega Aquaterra small seconds in blue. And then uh, I got the Batman, um, which obviously has the half blue bezel, 24 hour GMT. So uh, other specs on this watch, uh, it is very heavy. I mean, on the uh, Breitling website, it says that we've got uh, this weighing in at 224 grams. So it's about twice as much as the uh, the Navitimer that I did, you know, I highly recommend you guys go check out that video as well. Um, I'll probably be doing a comparison video, not comparison, but just a video in general talking about the, the two most iconic Breitling chronograph watches, which is the Navitimer and then the, 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 the Chronomat. Uh, like I said earlier, it's in the name. We have a 44 millimeter diameter. The thickness on this is 14.4. So it, uh, it does have a large presence. It could be higher. Uh, you know, it, it could be, uh, it could sit higher on the wrist. It could be bigger. It's not. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely not anything that you would wear in a dress situation. Very, 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 very sporty watch. Um, we have a lug width of 22 millimeters. Now, wearing anything other than this bullet bracelet just might look you know, may look strange on this watch just because if you can take a look to see how this connects. I don't know. I've never seen a different type of variation on these newer chronomats. So if you guys have, uh, you know, post a link in the comments below. I'd love to be able to see, uh, you know, what that looks like. So uh, the, the price for this watch, uh, I've got it um, actually right up here. Hold on. We've got this coming in at a flat $9,000. So I uh, got a pretty hefty price tag on it. Uh, but, you know, for being one of the flagship watches of a brand um, and a 
you know, chronograph of this caliber. And that uh, has historical value as well. I think 9000 is uh, is a really good price point for this watch. Um, you know, value retention, that's a different topic and a different conversation. Uh, you know, it's not going to be anything like a Rolex or, you know, now some of the Omegas. But, you know, this is a newer collection in the, the Super Chronomat. Um, you know, I don't think that uh, with the global supply chain, dealers have a ton of these in stock. You know, Moyer was, uh, I think they had two of these. They they had a, a black one with uh, with another uh, dial right here for uh, GMT function. And then they had this one. Um, so I don't know what availability is like. I'm assuming it's going to get uh, better in the long run. Uh, but these watches can be had, you know, pr pretty regularly for, for nine grand, uh, MSRP. And then, uh, I think the, the pre-owned market is still too early to tell what that will be on this. Um, so overall great watch. Um, I know on, uh, some other Breitling videos I've done, uh, we've talked about the packaging just kind of being very lackluster and, and not adding to, you know, a wonderful, great first impression. Um, but I don't want that to take away from what's actually inside the box, which is the watch. This is amazing. For me, if this was about four millimeters smaller, uh, this would have to be a serious consideration for something that is a, a must own. Um, but great watch for uh, anyone that's got a larger wrist or anyone that, that loves big watches. This watch is for you. The blue is absolutely amazing. I recommend going to the, you know, your local authorized Breitling dealer and check these out. So guys, thanks for joining us on this video. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Like I've said plenty of times, it really does help us grow our channel, allow us to get more hands on with watches like this and do more content that you guys are asking us for. So, you know, one of the reasons why I uh, wanted to do uh, a chronomat specifically is someone wrote in the comments that they wanted to see one. You know, uh, I've got access through local authorized dealers here to get a hold of a lot of brands. Really, the only thing I can't get a hold of um, to do um, from authorized dealers is Rolex. But I know a lot of people with Rolexes that are willing to, to lend me their watches uh, to be able to do reviews. So if there's anything specific you guys want to see, drop a comment below. And, uh, you know, if I uh, can be able to get a hold of what you're looking for, I'll do a review on it. So again, thanks for joining us on this video and we will see you on the next one.